my name is Denny Sexsmith. I'm the sales director here at Off Grid Trailers, and today we're going to take a tour around the Pando. You guys have three different models, right? Correct. You have the Pando, which is this one. Okay. And we've got the Expedition, which has got that large departure angle on the back. Uh, so the Pando and the Expedition are sleep in and sleep on trailers. And then we have our Switchback, which is just strictly a sleep on trailer. The Expedition and the Pando are roughly the same footprint. Okay. Just different rear galley kitchen versus side galley kitchen. So this has the rear kitchen. Correct. Right? So let, I guess let's, let's get right into that, open this up and show us, because this is the biggest difference. If you have watched our video on the Expedition, this is going to be one of the biggest difference that you'll see in the Pando. Correct. Okay, so let's let's open this up. Your full rear galley kitchen with stainless steel countertop. Uh, over here you have your custom made uh, in-house stainless steel sink that you have right here. Hot and cold water. Hot and cold water, yep. okay. That comes from the hot water and demand system that's on the side of the trailer. Okay, perfect. Then down just below it here in this compartment you have your standard 14 gallon water tank and if you take the optional 19 gallon um, additional water tank, it gets mounted to the bottom, which gives you full 33 gallons. Okay, so a total of 33 gallons of fresh water if you do the two tanks. Correct. Okay, perfect. Yep. And I wanna point out some of these things. These are some sure. of the details that I love to point out is these latches, these are not inexpensive. These are like $15 latches. So everything in here feels really nice, very premium. and. Lots of storage too. Storage oh, right. Look at that. Yeah, that's for your spices and everything. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it slides all the way out too, full extension. Definitely highlight in the kitchen here. And all aluminum. The tracks are aluminum, the whole the the everything, the doors. So no is no. there any is there any wood in the trailer? Absolutely none. No wood. What's Zero wood. No what about the cabinetry? Zero. What about the floor? Absolutely none. It's just a thermal uh, composite board with fiberglass. There's oh, zero wood. Wow, that's really incredible. That's a huge, huge value add. And it's built to last. Yeah, and it's built to, yeah, it's gonna last forever, right? Um, that's cool, and this is a cool little... Pip towel holder. This is not stock, this, this no, is No, that's your option, yeah. Okay, so, so there are a lot of options. And I, I let's step back for a second and talk about um, most manufacturers in the camping RV world, uh, they pretty much it's like, hey, this is a take it alert, leave it mentality. You guys are a little bit different. You want to explain? Yeah, sure. So we do have our standard features and, and standard builds, but we have a ton of options that you can customize and make it your own, even down to the wrap. You can choose from 23 different options. Okay. We also have a custom option that you can utilize as well. If you had something that was a little bit more sentimental to you and your family or yourself, you can put it on that wrap. Our graphic designer is really awesome. And he'll lay it out for you. So there's tons of different things that you can do and make it your own. And another standard feature as we segue into that, it's so you've got a 57 liter fridge in the back here. You do have a little slider in there that can turn it into an ice box at top. So you can keep your vegetables in the back here for a quick prep as well as you have the option for the fridge in the front. Standard 57 liter. Yep. 57 liters is quite large. It is. I've done week long trips almost with just this fridge with me, my wife and my daughter. So this is actually, it does have a good amount of space. Um, and then how big is the option for the other fridge? So up you there? have two different options. You have a 55 liter Dometic or a 69 liter dual zone Truma fridge. Okay. Wow. So you could, that's very large. That's a lot of fridge and freezer yep. if you need it, but just the standard, I think that's sufficient for a good expedition. Right? Exactly. Good. Otherwise you'd have a space or compartment in the front to even put your additional cooler if you wanted, if you didn't want to get the fridge option. And it looks like lots of good storage throughout. Yeah. So that one there is usually for your pots and pans uh, for the most part. And then you have your slide out stove. Okay. So that's yeah. why I'm saying pots and pans because it's a lot right, easier to there. access them. Okay. And then you can use your stove thereafter. And then this comes up and this is a two burner Dometic. Yep. And it does have two separate ones. The right side is the larger BTU. Correct. And Correct. this one is a little bit more of a simmer. Like a simmer. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to be boiling your coffee, you use the right hand side, left hand side would be like your slow simmer type of thing. And what's really cool is like, <clears throat> once again, I love how you guys do options because we, we've had trailers that have this exact same stove and this is it. You flip, you flip this up, there's no windshield whatsoever. And yeah. if there is, a, it is a windy day, these tend to get blown out sometimes, right? And you guys have a full on uh, optional, option. yeah, optional windscreen that you can, we mount to the side in the pando here. Oh, right here. Yeah, right so there. So these little clips, so you can get that option in. Yeah, you can get that option in. And it gets out of the way, so you can open up your cabinet still. And then once you get to camp, you can put up your your windscreen, 
and yeah. it goes all the way around and it's gonna make this a lot more efficient. Exactly. That's awesome. These are the details, the windshield, right? That's designed because you guys, one, listen to your customers and then yeah. you go out and experience it yourself and realize, yeah. yeah we need this. Yeah, we'll take that feedback and we'll take it out when we go camping and we'll see, is that a valid concern, right? Obviously any concerns are mostly valid, but for the fact that, is this gonna be a bigger issue down the road? Moving on over into this, uh, what, what do we got right here? So this is your Bluetooth speaker control and in the panel, your speakers are built into the hatch here, the rear hatch, okay. along with your LED lights. Okay. So that'll control your speakers. Oh, and this is your light. And right that there. is your light switch oh. right there. And then you've got your digital readout with USB right there too. Oh yeah, so you have your battery voltage. We got 13.3 volts. Yep. And you have two USB ports. Two USBs to plug in. Uh, and I love the, these little details, 13.3 volts. This is ideal, right? Yeah. Like where you have the actual voltage, yeah. Because then you know where you're at on your batteries, correct? And where the danger zone is, right? You yep. don't want to be, you don't want to be below 12 volts. That's where you're like, I need to get plugged in, get correct. Some power. But if you don't have a simple thing like this, you can't tell. You have no idea. And then it looks like we have a rear receiver right here. Exactly. So it's a two-inch rear receiver, so that can carry up to about 400 pounds of static weight. So bikes. Uh, what have you, so we can put that right on the back here. Okay, and a lot of time you can buy um, certain bike racks. They just swing out away, so if okay. you do pull over off the side of the highway for a quick snack or what have you, you can just swing the bikes away, oh, open up the hatch, still open it. and that way you don't have to dismount the bikes, oh, dismount really the rack. Good. That's really good to know. So yeah, that's just awesome. a nice swing away is perfect. And then um, it looks like you have some cool stuff up here. That's just stuff some that we have as our, that. yeah, that's in our online store for oh, those that okay, are looking okay. for online stuff. So we like to just mount certain things like that for other people. But that's really cool. Awesome. And you do have a locking Strut. mechanism right here. Correct. Which is really important. Yeah, so that locks in place so that way, you know, it doesn't come down and crash it down on your head. It locks in place and then you just press the button and close it up. Okay, let's do that really quick. Hey, here we are on the passenger side. Can you, you, you mentioned earlier about the wrap. Yeah, I think the Pando is one of the, the nicer versions of our trailers to some degree where it showcases the wrap. So you, you know, you get 23 different choices, but even for those that custom make the wrap, like this is kind of like your picturesque scene because everybody's sitting on this side of the trailer and you're looking at your wrap that you've just purchased, right? That's so cool. I really like that on the Pando. That's just a clean wall. Yeah, I like that too. And what do we have up here? So these are uh, the ports to the AC rough-in. So we've designed our AC uh, rough-in around the zero breeze. Okay. So these just thread out, so that way it keeps all the bugs and dust out. And then you've got your through ports right to vent out your exhaust or, or what have you, right? Okay, so you got intake and exhaust for air conditioning. Intake out to, into yep. the Into the AC. Into the compartment on the inside. Awesome. And then it looks, tell me a little bit about the construction material. What is beyond this wrap? What's the material? So you've got double sided aluminum. Okay. One side is about 90 thou, the other side is about 60 thou. Uh, so in between those two sheets of aluminum is a, about two inches of closed cell foam. Okay. And that's an insulation, a foam board insulation? Correct. And it's about, uh, it's about an R10 insulation value on okay. that. Okay. And now I know like, as far as like, camping in the winter time it's how, how does the box hold up in cold weather really really well it has a great insulation even underneath with that thermal board that we have on there so with the furnace and that you stay extremely warm on the inside we've had customers stay in like 40 below weather inside these trailers and never had an issue one of the inherent design flaws in anything made outside of the Americas is insulation you know like they're just not really designed around well insulation and because they don't deal with freezing snow you know everywhere in North America especially Canada deals with extreme you know cold temperatures right correct so I think there's always a better design going into anything made in America when it comes to insulation and cold weather very much so not only the insulation but how everything is put together and sealed and everything else so you don't have that cold air kind of coming into those cracks or spaces, right? So that it's very well sealed in Absolutely. your sleeping uh, quarters there. And then, but now like water, like this isn't like four seasons where you're camping with water and you're gonna, you'll wanna winterize it. Correct, right? you, once you winterize your water system, then you can fully use it. And a lot of people will just bring potable water with them when they go in the winter time or late fall. That makes sense. And um, so what are the studs? inside here? Yeah, so the studs are uh, spaced out about 14 inch centers to some degree and they're this structural aluminum. Okay, so structural welded aluminum? Yep. Is that what, okay, so all welded aluminum frame with aluminum skin inside and outside with 
insulation in the middle. Correct. Now, what what is this right here? So this is your di diamond board that we use. It's uh, aluminum diamond board that we then powder coat. So we bend it, shape it into the fender that is always replaceable. So you can replace, so if you're going down a trail and you accidentally rip it off or dent it or what have you, eventually you can reach back out to us and get a new fender installed because they're, they're pretty simple to put, take on and take off. So they're all powder coated as well to kind of protect it over time. Yeah, and, and it's very strong. I mean, I, you see some cheap campers out there where they just use a fiberglass plastic yep. fender and you get a blowout and it just shreds it to pieces, right? And you can literally step on these fenders. Yeah, yeah this feels very strong and it's all bolted. I've noticed it's all actually bolted to the frame Correct. down there. Correct. So, like you said, easy to remove and also very robust and strong to step on. Um, let's talk about the tires. What's your standard tire size and rim? So the tire is 265, 70, 17 as your standard uh, all-terrain uh, tire. Then you're on a uh, 17 by eight and a half inch rim okay. with a six by five and a half bolt pattern. What is that? Like That's that usually a comparable to like a Toyota vehicle. Okay. So they usually have a six by five and a half. Us Jeep owners, unfortunately, have a five by five, so we can't really get into the uh, the six by five and a half. So you don't get the bolt pattern, but what do you get with the Jeep owner? You got a whole lot of size, fun. Lot. Well, you can get yeah, you can get up to a 35 inch tire on here. Um, I've got 37s on my Gladiator, yeah. Um, but I still stick with the stock because it rides really well behind it. Okay, that's good. But that's cool to know that you can upgrade them if you want. Exactly. And um, what kind of brake do we have on this? So they're 12 inch electric brakes. Okay. And then the breakaway ca cable on that is located on the front as well. So and fit. they're Dexter hub, is that what I understand? Yes. Dexter. And Dexter is like, for those who don't know, Dexter is like one of the most common. Universal Universal ones. hubs. Yeah. They're really easy to service and maintain. For the most part, they are maintenance-free. They're kind of maintenance-free. Yeah, yeah, you should not have to deal too much with those. So yeah. I'm happy about that. Um, and then let's move over to this area. Tell me about this, a little bit about this door. Sure. No. Uh, so back in the day, well, almost three years ago now, uh, we used to just use a standard challenge door, which you see in a lot of trailers on the market right now. Um, but because of COVID, short supply chain started becoming a, a very apparent situation for us. So we manufacture and design all our trailers. So we're like, well, why don't we just do our own doors? So we had a couple of people on the crew uh, in the engineering department that used to manufacture and design ambulance doors. Okay. So that's kind of what this door is made in mind with. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the latch here is really great. So that's an ambulance door latch. That yep. thing looks super heavy duty and robust. Yep. Yeah, I think I was looking these up. They're like 20, 30 bucks for just a latch. Right. Which is amazing. So it's another added value. And it's got deadbolt built into it, slider window with screen so the bugs don't get in. Uh, you do have an option of the privacy shade. So the door as a whole is just an added value for the trailer because it's a lot more robust and, and keeps, you know, keeps everything out. Yeah. Heat, cold you know, dust for the most part. And you have a really nice good seal here, I can tell. Yep. And it's got a dual closing system, right? So most people, when they close it, you know, it looks like it's closed, yeah. but it's not flush. Yeah. So just giving it a good push, That's now you're flush yeah, and sure. sealed. Yeah, and, and this is, this is, I think, really important to mention and point out is like these, these doors like are really like incredible. Most, most manufacturers, you know, like you said, they just, they order a door from another manufacturer. And build around it. And build around it, right? Yeah. And, and I think this is really neat. This is what I love about um, OGT is that you guys really do a lot of your uh, construction, your parts and everything in-house, right? right? Building your doors in-house and your supplies. Where do you get most of your supplies? Uh, within North America. Within we try and support local, right? As much as possible. Yeah, and that's really cool. It's because I, I, I see in the industry, a lot of times you get so many manufacturers, they just, it's like a Frankenstein, tra Frankenstein trailer is what I call it, where it's just, they, they, you know, they go down the list and they go out and outsource all of the parts from yep. all of these different manufacturers from all over the world. Yep. More of an assembly. Assembly versus an actual is. manufacturing. Yeah, exactly. And you guys, I, I know I've talked with Dwayne, he says even lots of your metals that you get are locally or North America, like yep. it's really, really neat. I love how you guys are very passionate about, you know, you truly do build in North America. 100%. Right in Canada, so. That's awesome. And you can tell you guys are very proud. And this right here looks like a nice little 
Yeah, it just prevents from the door swinging closed on you when there's like a light wind or what have you. So that's something that we also designed in, in, in mind where customers were giving us the feedback saying, well, how can we stop the door from closing shut on us? Yeah. So now you have that well, option. Like one of the most common ones that, it, that you see out in the market is like a little piece of plastic and a little clip. And Which just, snaps. Like, over it and they, those just, yeah. Oh yeah, wind picks up, it just snaps it right off. <laughs> this is a robust rubber piece. It, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, and it's mounted on this, uh, maybe a little overkill almost. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of that's like the theme. I feel like most of the stuff seems to be more like... Robust. Yeah. Oh, oh bro. I don't want to say overkill, but, cause, <laughs> but it is very, very it's robust. It's built to last. Yeah, it's built to last. Now tell us, let's talk a little bit about this awning. Which awning is this? So this is the 230. Uh, 108 actually this is the 270 awning so this one here okay. on the pando wraps all the way around above the rear hatch as well so that way if your hatch is closed you have the ability to walk out back and still stay out of the elements okay and then and also lift it up and have your kitchen correct it, all it, under it clears it yeah a lot of the time people will choose the 180 just because yeah. they already have the rear hatch and don't always see the value yeah. in having the redundancy out back yeah. But we have been seeing a trend as of late of people doing the 270 because they don't always want the kitchen open. They want to close it. Yeah. And now they've got that full gazebo off the side of the trailer. Yeah, and if you do have bikes and you're not getting in the kitchen, they'll be covered too under the awning. Exactly. So, Staying out of the rain. That makes sense. So uh, let's talk a little bit about this. So what you have in the front here is the optional on the pando, the optional uh, fridge in the front on the slider. Or storage. Or storage. Yeah, storage yeah. is built into the base price. Yeah. The fridges are the uh, option going yeah. forward. Yeah. So what we have here is the 69 liter dual zone Truma fridge. Okay. And which you said there's another option. For you can small. get the 55 liter Dometic. Okay. So if you don't see value in the larger fridge, you can get a smaller fridge as yeah, well. Because you have two now in this one. Which is exactly. Cool. But this one's got the dedicated fridge and freezer compartment sections. Uh, or ultimately, so they are dual zone, so you can run them both as a freezer or a fridge. Yeah, and this right here, I love how you guys have laser cut, put your name on this, and this is a, just a strap to hold the fridge in, right? Yeah, so there's a front uh, front strap and a rear strap on the inside too, so there's okay. always two, two straps, and we also mount it to the bottom, so you know, if something should happen or if you hit a big bump, you don't have your cooler bouncing around on the inside. It's now well supported on the inside here. It's, it's amazing is because we have a, you know, I, I deal a lot with this type of stuff. And usually the most common thing is like some uh, straps from like a, like a ratchet strap yeah, or like not even a ratchet strap, like those straps that you put around your sleeping bag. You like, know, a like a bungee just, cord almost. Almost like a bungee cord and they just come up. But then when you pull them down, they fall down and they get stuck in the tracks. And it's kind of a nuisance. I love how this is just, you guys have designed this perfectly for... Well, and it's solid because even with those bungee cords, whatever, you still have the flex, so this will still move. Yeah. This yeah. doesn't move. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's awesome. And it looks like you have all your controls right here. Yep. And this is a really nice track system. It looks like this whole drawer is... You yep. guys make this? We make everything in-house, except custom. for the slides. We obviously buy the slides in externally, but this the, the shelf in that is the tray is all yeah. made in-house. It looks really nice and well done. And so. then you press to disengage it. And then a nice little feature here too is once you close it, it's in the lock position. We've also added a little piece on the door to prevent it from clicking down and disengaging. While you're driving. While so, you're driving. Yeah, it's because that, if that ever, for some weird reason. Now it's sliding. And then it wouldn't be like hitting into the, into the vehicle. Correct. That makes sense. And I love this is because usually when you see these tracks, you have to press both of these. This looks like you can just press Just it simply push it right down. in the middle and pull it out. That's a, it, it's just the little touches, right? Those are like the things. And I, and I see like a lot of manufacturers, you know, like we were saying earlier, you guys use these campers. And that's where you get all of these little details as you're using it, what's more convenient, what's nicer. Yep. And I can see that you've built that into the camper. Yep, always. So that's really cool. Maybe let's uh, head up to the front and talk about what we got going on up Fantastic. here. Fantastic. Okay, so coming up here to the front, I uh, love the tire up here. Yep. The spare tire, the standard, right, on all of them? Uh, so it is an option. Okay, the spare. Okay. So yeah, you can get that as an option. As you can see, you know, we've got a, a wheel bag on the front, kind of showcase where you can put like your garbage or whatever else that you want to carry on the front. Yeah, I love that. And what do we got for hitch options? So right now we utilize the Max Coupler articulating hitch. So you get uh, the full 360 articulation as you're going over rocks, logs, what have you. Okay. So we really, really like this product. You can't consider yourself an off-road trailer if you 
are running a ball. When it's locked in place with a pin versus a ball that, as we had said before, you know, over time with rust and that, when you put it on the ball, you don't know if it's really fully engaged or not. So you do run the risk if you go over a big bump or what have you of disengaging. Yeah, no, I, I've actually seen balls get disengaged and, and it's just that that's like the weakest point will break if you're given too much, you know, torque on it. And this, you, because it's moving in every direction, it doesn't allow for that to be the weak point, right? Exactly. So very important. And over here, I know there's different options for jockey wheels. This is the upgraded, the arc. Correct. So for those who have watched the expedition video, you know, you get to the point where that was the Fulton 1500 single wheel jack, which is standard. This is your dual wheel uh, XO arc jack. Yeah, and these work really well, especially on a trailer this size. They're easy to maneuver, move around. Extremely easy, especially if you're in gravel or dirt or what have you. You can really move it around with this stuff with this specific yeah. jack. And this and this comes up and swivels completely out of the way, so you have no. That's issue correct. With so once you're already hooked up on your tow vehicle, you can then, you know, wheel it down. It clicks up all the way up. You slide it, pins it over. There's like a little pin at the bottom there that holds the wheel in place, so it doesn't spin around while you're traveling. And, and you guys run the standard seven pin correct for your brakes lights and trickle charging right so yeah through your seven pin you can trickle charge through it uh, so you have the ability so it runs your lights your brakes uh, 12 inch electric brakes and then you can trickle charge right through it <laughs> and i love these boxes how they fit up in this rack they fit perfect so that's a 102 liter 230 um, i know there's other brands that carry the same size and Dwayne and I both mounted ours permanently to that top box. You put a little Sika Flex so it doesn't leak through the holes and they fit absolutely awesome. And oh wow, so you've actually mounted this and this is just kind of hangs out up here. Correct. Oh, that's really cool. And, and you we, put a lot of soft goods up there, right? Yeah, for sure, that's really cool. And, and if you didn't want to mount this, you have all of these tie downs, these strap points, right? Exactly, and you Still can put tough. wood or what have you. A lot of, I recommend usually putting a rubber mat down first so that you don't really scratch up your powder coating on your box. And that yeah. way you can throw firewood, rubber made totes, what have you up there. Perfect, and over here, it looks like we have a shore power plug. Yep, that's your shore power plug. So you can plug in once you get to campsite or to a generator when you're on site. Okay. And then you've got your ZAMP port for your solar panels. Yeah, and now these solar panels, you don't have, there's not a built-in solar charge controller, right? Correct. So you're gonna wanna make sure what other, whatever solar panels you get, they have a solar charge controller. Correct, or you can buy them separately. Like obviously you can buy solar panels relatively reasonable these days. Yeah. But as long as you have a charge controller between the solar panel and the batteries, you're good to go. Perfect, awesome. And this is just a 15 amp or regular 120 extension cord. Yep, plug in. That you just plug in just like that, pretty easy. And that's nice for maintenance while you're storing the trailer or if you do pull into a campground and you wanna just have your batteries fully charged, run there, conditioning, watch movies, right? Exactly, Perfect. yeah, you don't ever have to worry about it. And of course your generators too, you could have a small little generator plug in, right? Exactly, there. and okay. usually with the, the battery system that we have in the trailer, you can run you know quite a few days before you have to even fire up a generator. Yeah. Fire up your generator, charge up the battery, shut it off. You don't have to leave it continuously running. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's great. So let's move over into this area. Okay, perfect. Okay, we are now on the driver's side and you wanna tell us what's going on in this compartment? Oh, for sure. So in this compartment, once again, opening up one of these uh, nice latches. Oh yeah, we love those. You know, as you can see, tons and tons of storage depending on what you're buying for, you know, storage compartment. Also a porta potty can fit up here really nice. Um, so we, we're using like these shell cases that you can get from any local store, even Amazon, put a lot of your, your ropes and straps and whatever else in there. Yeah. Uh, you've got your electrical system here. Uh, this is the upgraded 2000 watt Xantrax inverter system with your dual batteries. Um, and then, you know, just like I said, tons and tons of storage. The, with the batteries, the Xantrax is awesome. It's yep. a great inverter, 2000 watts. Yep. This is more than what you'll need for a camper this size? I believe so. Yeah, it depends on what you're bringing for any appliances or what have you. So that's what we do in conjunction with you guys, you know, and find out what the customer's needs are. So that way it's not something that's overkill. Absolutely. Now, what is what is this little QR code sticker thing? Oh, that's something that's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. So it's our uh, direct QR code that takes you to your knowledge base that we've built out over uh, the time here. Lots of videos, knowledge articles, what have you. So you just give that a quick scan with your phone, takes you right there and you can watch all the videos on how to set up a, an awning, how to dewinterize your trailer, all that good stuff. Yeah, I actually noticed we have a owner's manual in here. Yep. I read, I actually 
finished it. <laughs> it's uh, 50 pages, 51 pages right there. Just some light reading. Just some light reading. I just read through everything. And this is phenomenal. The, the only owner's manual that I've ever seen that's better than this in a uh, RV are like 700 to a million dollar motor coaches. They'll have like much thicker and wider, bigger with like- It's a binder. Wire. Yeah, it's a binder with stuff. Uh, and they, like, they show out the, the full wiring diagram of the entire motor coach. But this is actually really good. You have, you actually have some wiring diagrams you ha in here you have, yep. it's kind of like the how to uh, hooking up your trailer, crossing your chains. Um, I noticed there's like, they teach you how to winterize and go through the water and sanitize, sanitizing your tanks. Um, I loved the, have the fuse panels here, you know, so like I can actually, oh, my water pump's not working. I can pull out my owner's manual right here and can be like, oh, that's a uh, fuse eight and it's a 10 amp. You know, and I like, I'm like in trailers all the time. I'm like, oh, nothing's labeled here. I'm popping them out. <laughs> Even in a car, yep. it's like, there's more fuses, so it's confusing. But this is super simple, yep. like really easy. You know, some of those big ones, but like, I am so shocked at how many RV manufacturers do not do any type of owner manual. And at the very back, it has a- uh, Maintenance actual, schedule. Maintenance schedule. It tells you how often to torque your wheels, what to torque them to. What to like, grease, yeah, what to look out for, when yeah, to winterize. How, how often. Yep. It gives you, like this gives you the seven pin wiring diagram, tells you the colors, the coating, what it's for. Goes through and it gives you like nice pictures. But the nice thing too is if you do lose it by chance, which you know it happens, you can download it off our website as well. Oh, yeah. And and I and I and I was looking at the warranty, the terms and conditions, and everything was in here that I feel like you'll ever need. And then I also did jump on this and tech, check out some of this stuff, and that was cool too. Right? Yeah, well, because a lot of the time, what people have struggles with is how do I put my awning away? Yeah. It was great to open it up, but a lot of people don't really take into effect that they should have either took pictures or video as they were opening it up. So you yeah. tend to forget, right? So yeah. we've helped limit that situation to the point where here's a video that shows you to put, how to put it away. Yeah. Same with dewinterizing your trailer or winterizing your trailer. We've done that step by step just to help you it's, out. It's unbelievable. And, and then there's also like this winterizing. Most manufacturers don't tell you how to winterize the trailer. No. And dealers don't tell you how to winterize the trailers because they tell you, oh, just bring it here. Bring it back. We'll do it for we'll you. we'll do it for you. And, and it literally you. takes no longer than 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. And they're usually, I think a standard winterization is 100 to $200. So it's in your book, in your manual, yeah. in our database. In your and video. Takes no time at all. And this is a little, got a little light in there too. Yeah. Part of that upgraded lighting package that you can get in the panda as well. So with that, it gives you lighting in the front box. It gives you lighting in the side shower box as well as underneath the trailer and a dimmer switch on the inside of sleeping quarters. under the trailer? Yeah. Like crown? You get rock lighting underneath. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't, I haven't seen that. It's part of the lighting package. There you go. That's awesome. And you have some outside lights too, it looks like, right yeah. here. Yeah, each door has its own porch light on either side and then the switch is located at the roof. Ooh, and that's bright. That's bright. It actually has a uh, yellow filter on that one that you can obviously buy from wherever. Okay, so yeah. Limit the, the bugs. bugs. Limit the bugs. It's yeah. really nice. Let's turn that off so we're not blind and um, anybody or anything. But so w we are on the driver's side and yep. tell me about the awning. What do we have over here? So with the trailers, we don't install a tent on the trailers. You do have the ability to potentially put two awnings on it. Okay. So on the one side of the Pando here, it had 270. On this side, it's a 180. So you kind of get a full circumference of gazebos per se on this uh, trailer. Yeah. So it does showcase the 180 on this one where it's side to side. Uh, covering you on this side so that way when you do get out nobody's getting wet that's awesome yeah and or sun right it's a hot day this is gonna you know but it cools it down even when you put the walls on the awnings too so now you can put walls all the way around the trailer okay so you do actually have some sort of wall materials that you can correct do as an add-on yeah something. on the 180 you have one wall with a doorway in it yeah on the 270 there are two separate walls there's wall one which covers from the front of the trailer to about halfway with a door in it okay. and then the second wall goes all the way around to the back that's awesome, that's really cool. And then um, coming over into this area, yep. once again, similar to the other side with all the materials, but right here, this looks like we have the outside bathroom set up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so right here, you've got your uh, Propex furnace, 6500 BTU furnace. You've got your light in the side shower box here, and this is your Eco Temp uh, hot water. And, and this system. is all propane. Yes. And we have the propane hidden back here. Right behind, behind your shower enclosure. Behind the here. shower over here. Correct. Okay. 
And then, so uh, you're running everything. Your your stove is propane, water heater, furnace is propane. You said 6,500? 6,500 BTUs. 6,500, that, that sounds like a lot of propane for such a small little ca cabin. It's a lot, but uh, it has a thermostat built into it, so it'll get it to temperature, shut off, and then it'll just consistently do that. So it's not gonna consume a lot of propane at that point. Okay, perfect. And so, so it keeps you nice and warm. And it looks like he added a nice little mirror. Yeah, you there. got the little sticker mirrors on here with the thermostat as well, so you can see the temperature both inside and outside. That's great, yeah. And if you're in the shower, you can turn it that way and kind of shave from the little... Exactly, so right. That's, that's really nice. And this shower, this is an add-on that you can get on any of the units, right? Correct, yeah. So what we have here is your 23-0 uh, shower enclosure which is mounted on our in-house custom-made swing away bracket. So the bracket will actually swing against the trailer here okay. and then swing away. So as you can see, it still gives you full access to this as it's away from the trailer. So that way, if any water comes through, it just goes away from the trailer. Oh, and then there's a little mount for this. For the shower so head. That, that would go up in there. You essentially are going to set your temperature and this is your pressure. Correct. And then you just put this in there and you can turn it on and off. Off you go. go. Correct. That's, that's amazing. You got a little light and your water pumps right here too. Yep, your switch to your water pump is there as well. So yep. everything's all centrally located and everything's already all plumbed. So it's all plumbed. You don't have to. You don't have to like punch anything in. No, nope. and no hoses are uh, on the outside. Everything's all run through the entire body of the trailer, it's hidden. Done. I really like that. I love the setup. I love how it's built in, you know, like opposed to getting one of those cheap little setups that pop outside. It's nice to have it all. Built yeah, in. it's like a Swiss Army knife, right? Sort of thing where all your, your awnings, everything else come folds out and then you just fold it all back in. Yeah, and, it then, nice and, and, neat. Then, and then it's also storage, right? It's like I don't have to store something separate and take up space. Correct. It's all but mounted right there. We're going to go inside and take a nap together. You know it. <laughs> let's, let's go check out the inside, actually. Let's go. Welcome. Welcome. It's very comfortable, nice place to learn about your trailer, sitting inside, right? Yep. Uh, how big is this bed? Queen size bed. Queen size bed. And thickness? This is a standard four inch mattress. Okay. And you do have an option to get a six inch thick mattress that converts into a couch. Okay. Wow, couch. Yep. How do you guys? handle a couch so the couch has three six uh, sections to it okay so two smaller ones one larger one the two kind of stack up on top then on top of the large one and then gets pushed up to the, against the one of these walls okay and then you kind of lean in that yeah way. you can either face this way or if it's on that side with the tv here you can kind of watch the tv from the side okay that makes sense that's pretty cool lots of good storage in here mm -hmm. uh it's like you said no no wood no wood None. Every, everything we got aluminum white panels in here which is nice it makes it feel kind of large yep um these cabinets once again quality latches hitches and and hinges it looks like these are also the friction hinges right correct that hold it up yep just like you had in the rear galley of the kitchen oh look at this i just noticed a little detail so when you hit the ceiling you got a little little stopper little stopper there that's nice um and now uh, this one does have the AC option. If I didn't go with the AC, what would be in this place? It would be a full cabinet door okay. with storage in behind it. So a full length, just like this one down here. Correct. And then this opens up and it looks like you got, uh, wow, that's really deep storage, huh? Yeah, you can fit quite a bit of stuff in there. Um, as you see, there's like a bunch of front runner boxes and what have you in there. Yeah. So it does hold a lot. So that's pretty deep. And that was not even to the back of the, the wall in there. Oh yeah, you have a little bit more space. And this is, you can put all your clothing or whatever you want in here. Your socks, your underwear, socks, your underwear. shirts, what have you. A lot okay. of that in there. And then you can also utilize that door as a shelf because it does have a support off the wall. Okay, yeah, so right there it comes down and kind of sets right there. Exactly. Your glasses, your books, whatever you want to put on there, something light, it'll sit on there, not a problem. Yes, because if you're laying down at night and you just want to 
you know, when you're yeah, you reading. Yeah, you take your glasses off, your book, put it up there, right there, done. That makes sense. Looks like uh, El Presidente has added some little storage shelves in here. Yeah, he finds a lot of these little storage shelves and the cup holders and stuff like that and mirrors, uh, stuff that you can find on Amazon and you just add, add your little flair to it. Okay, that's really great. Um, and what about the TV? TV is an option. Okay. Otherwise, and it and it takes place of the door. Yeah. So it's a solid plate because we need a rigid backstop to the TV so it doesn't bounce around. Um, but you can still access the storage from behind through the left hand side here. Otherwise, if you forego the TV and just went with the standard, then it's a storage door. Okay, so it's a storage right there or TV as an option. Correct. And then you, it looks like we have a bunch of controls in here, your propane, your inverter system. Uh, yeah, so you've got your inverter system all there, so you can turn it on and off, and you can see what it, what's going on there. You've got your Propex um, furnace readout there, so you can turn it on here. You can turn up the temperature, turn it down. You've got your 110 plug-in, so you've got dual 110 plug-ins there. You have a USB with also that digital readout that you saw in the kitchen. Okay. So you've got that in here too, and then you've got your two ports for your furnace to push the air in and take the air out. And then you've got your dimmer switch. And and in the lighting package, oh, that's not even So it gives time. you a dimmer oh, yeah. switch. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's nice. So you can dim that down and not have it as bright. Exactly. Otherwise, the standard's a toggle switch. Okay, on and that's just on and off. Okay, Correct. that makes sense. And it looks like we have a pretty nice fan here. Yep, that's the Man Max Fan Deluxe. So it does come with a few more bells and whistles, like your your thermostat, your um, remote. Remote. The remote to change things, the speeds. Correct. In and out. It, this, this can bring air in or suck it suck out. Suck it right? out, correct. Yeah, yeah. These are these are probably one of the best um, fans out on the market. They truly are. I am, I'm amazed these sometimes how much they take away the need of an air conditioning unit Pretty much because so. they can create so much breeze and airflow. And if you crack your window here at Got night. Got that cross breeze. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. These yep. are very, very phenomenal fans. I'm yep. a huge fan of them. It looks like you have some storage shelves behind our head here. Yeah, you've got some adjustable shelves. So here you can bring it all the way down. Yeah. And then when you're done with it, you can get it up out of the way so you don't bang your head on it. Yeah. And I'm surprised. I like. I thought this was going to be kind of a nuisance back here, and it's it's not too bad. It's kind of... I mean, the door is open, right? If I had the door shut, I would be leaning up against this. And it's pretty... It's, it's comfortable in here, and we're two... Uh, bigger guys, guys. Bigger guys. You're 6'3", yep. you said? Yep. And yeah, I'm, I'm six. But even no worries a little wider than you but we, we still we still fit kind of comfortably in here and this right here you this just rolls up is that how that works yeah that's your privacy stage they just click on around the door here that keeps it closed and then you just roll it up and you can use the top toggles here to keep it in place okay really cool the thing that i love about this style of a trailer is uh the ease of setup mm -hmm. there's really not any setup right you just kind of pull into wherever you're at you know, make sure you're leveled up and you roll into bed. Exactly. Yeah, and if you're traveling, you know, and you you pull into like a rest stop or something, you literally walk in, open your door, lay down, go to sleep. And there's dead bolts on the doors too, so you can lock yourself in with no worry, yeah, worries. Not worry about anybody coming in. And that that's really nice is because if you're, if you don't, if you're like set up a tent or if you have to, you know, there's more setup to the actual camper itself, it can, it can get a little bit, if it's a rainy, you're exhausted, you just want to jump in and take a nap. It's really sometimes it becomes a nuisance with all the setup, right? This is like you're in, you're resting, you're relaxing. It's the reason why you buy a camper is to go out and enjoy yourself. Yep. And not spend hours setting it up, right? Well, especially if it's raining, let's say you get in late at the camp, you know, you're really tired. Maybe you want to grab a bite to eat. You can open up the rear galley kitchen, grab some snacks, hop into your trailer, you know, watch a little bit of TV before you go to bed. And then yeah. you're out like light. It feels very comfortable. Mm -hmm. The mattress feels nice and comfortable. It so. really does. Well, thank you so much for this uh, walk around and the, the tour. Of course, my pleasure. Yeah, it's been it's been fun. It's been uh, informative. I've learned a bunch about your camper and your product and your process. And I I love I love the the company, the culture, and what you guys are all about. And I'm excited to get one of these out off roading behind my truck. We can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's gonna be fun, right? Oh, heck yeah. We'll see you soon. See you guys. Bye-bye.